So now moving uh, beyond Europe to the international scene, it's an honor to introduce Professor Florian Cronenberg, who is head of the Institute of Genetic Epidemiology at the Medical University of Innsbruck in Austria and chair of the FH Europe Foundation International Task Force on LP Little A. The Foundation, FH Europe Foundation, was invited to spearhead this work in no small part because of the success of the FH pediatric screening political work. So Florian, as one of the leading lights in the area of LP Little A and a self-confessed LPA addict, tell us why such an international effort on LP Little A is so important. And Florian is joining us from the US, he's giving a lecture over there. Please, Florian, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you colleagues, I'm very pleased to be joining you at the first FH Europe Foundation annual network meeting. I'm sad that I can't be with you in person. I'm currently in the US to present at the Congress of the American Heart Association on LPLA, what else, and to be part of a roundtable on LPLA organized by the National Lipid Association. But I would like to share some thoughts with you. The first issue is on the importance of the testing for elevated LPLA across the globe. Each fifth person might have elevated LPLA concentrations and roughly 1 to 3% have very high LPLA concentrations above 100 mg per deciliter, which are associated with at least a doubling of the cardiovascular risk. Therefore, it is one of the most important risk factors for cardiovascular disease. You are only able to get to know whether someone has high LPLA by measuring it. You cannot smell it. You can't derive it from other factors. Therefore, you have to measure it and to consider it in the risk estimation of a given person. We know that there are key barriers to implement guidelines and consensus statements of various organizations, such as the one I had the privilege to chair last year together with Samir Mora and Eric Struss, namely the one from the European Atherosclerosis Society. It was very important for us to get experts from all over the world on board to increase acceptance across continents. Already at that time, we detected key barriers, which are as follows. Lack of awareness about LBLA by medical personnel as well as patients. The widely present misconception about why should I measure LBLA when I cannot yet lower it. We worked hard in the consensus paper to demonstrate that someone can already act now by lowering all risk factors a person might expose to. A further barrier is that those who have to pay the bill are asking what costs do they save by an early measurement. About cost of testing, in some countries it's free, in others it has to be paid from the private pocket. But the costs will come down when LPLA is measured more often and they are not so high. Since LPLA is so strongly genetically determined, some might fear to become stigmatized by the measurement of a high LBLA concentration. We have also to act on that to give an individual the assurance that measuring LBLA provides more advantages than disadvantages. To overcome those key barriers, and I did not mention all, and you might come up with further barriers during the meeting, the LBLA International Task Force is preparing for raising the awareness by multiple educational initiatives for patients, healthcare professionals, decision makers, and others. We will run a program about cost effectiveness of testing LPLA. And finally, and very important, how to implement those ideas in daily practice and daily life. Why an international initiative is so crucial at this time in, uh, point in time? High LPLA concentrations are a global problem and not restricted to a single country, continent, or ethnicity. And to convince stakeholders and decision makers about LPLA, we have to act on a global level to convince those people that an implementation in daily practice is important. And you will hear on that during the meeting. 
Since this cannot be done by a single person, we decided to create the OPLA International Task Force, which I have the privilege to chair and which is under the umbrella of the FH Europe Foundation. The core group consists of Magdalena Dacoa, Dicola Badlington, and Marius Genter, and myself. And Spella Bova supports us in so many organizational, organizational details. We decided to include in the Interna LPLA International Task Force several well-known and international experts from various fields to make the entire thing airborne. We are so grateful that the following persons accepted to contribute with their enormous knowledge. Sanfina Adimi, Jean-Luc Eisele, Boge Eliassen, Andrea Janitschkevich, Pia Kamstrup, Lena Lümperopoulou, Joa Tanasoulis, and last but not least, Mark Rieken. And Mark brings me to a, a further important keyword. This is the patient community and the LPLA ambassadors. And many of you are sitting today in the room. You guys are the salt in the soup. You are those people why we are here. And you are the voice for millions of people worldwide who are affected by high LPLA and or FH. Your histories, and your stories are incredibly important to wake up the community and the decision makers to give LPLA and FH and other inherited disturbances in lipid metabolism in clinical practice the place it deserves. Without you, we can't move the field. We are so grateful to you since we know it is not always easy to go out to the public and to share the experience you might have gone through. A big and heartful thank you. As a group of people, we want to build bridges between various disciplines, build a close collaboration between the patient advocacy community, researchers, and clinicians. It is our big hope that the international strategy and roadmap will be implemented during the next five years. It is a demanding goal. It will be sometimes a bumpy road, but we have the worthwhile reason in mind why we do this for our patients and their families. And now over to Nicola. In the meantime, I wish you a great meeting and look forward to our collaboration moving. Together, we can really make a change for people with high LPLA and other family hyperlipidemias. Thank you very much and have a good day. So I think you can all agree that Florian Cronenberg is an absolute rock star. He's played such an important role in building this LPA Little, LPA Little A international strategy and roadmap to move forward. And I will just spend a couple of minutes talking through where we've come from and where we're going in the last six months. We've actually built the task force, as we heard from Florian. We've now got strategy and roadmap in place. We also have a very exciting, robust work plan for 2024. We've also looked carefully at governance, at, at how we want to set ourselves up to ensure we've got maximum credibility moving forward. What we're actually now looking for is the funding. Everything is in place. We have the fantastic leaders, we've got the strategy, we've got where we want to go, but we need to work hard on getting our funding base sorted out. The vision for the LP Little A initiative is that LP Little A measurement is the norm globally, and elevated LP Little A is managed efficiently and equitably to contribute towards the prevention of premature cardiovascular disease and related deaths. Our Mission is to ensure that elevated LP little is recognized as an independent and important risk factor for CVD worldwide through a 4P medicine approach. This is really important, predictive, preventive, personalized, and participatory. And every person is tested for LP little a concentration at the most appropriate stage in the life course. And that this is embedded in combined screening and prevention programs before a cardiovascular event occurs crucially. And Florian referred to the strong partnership between patients, researchers, clinicians, and other stakeholders in evidence-based advocacy efforts to really stimulate effective policy at global and at national level. At the moment, ladies and gentlemen, LPA delay is invisible in some of the major 
documents, instruments at global level, and we need to change that. But we also need to work at national level, and at the first focus of our work at national level will be in Japan, Canada, and China, and also because of where FH Europe Foundation is located, a big emphasis on the European Union as well. Time doesn't allow me to go through the core values in detail, but we've tried to embed this project in some really important values, important principles, so that we go down the right road. And we do not only the right things, but we do things right, as Magda likes to quote. So transparency and independence, a strong patient's perspective, multi-stakeholder collaboration, and complementarity with existing in initiatives, not reinventing the wheel, but really working collaboratively. Florian mentioned the members of the core group, and what's really exciting is we've got a number of members here in the room, of course, Magda and Marius, we have Sanfina, we have Mark, um, we have myself, and we would be absolutely delighted to talk to you about the work that we've been doing and the direction of travel over the next couple of days. Recent additions to the International Task Force, important, are a representative from China, Dr. Chen, and a representative from Japan, Professor Harada Shiba. And of course, we have the representative from Canada, in any case, through George Fenalasulis. So those are the members of that international task force, and they will continue to work. Very briefly, the five core goals moving forward over the next five years. To raise awareness about LP Little A. Now, we heard yesterday that awareness is kind of a fluffy term. What does it actually mean? We're going to get very, very specific about this and really work with policymakers, with healthcare professionals, and patients and the public. To demonstrate cost effectiveness of cardiovascular disease prevention through the diagnosis of high levels of LP little a, and we'll hear from Safina a little bit later on about some other work that she's doing, but she'll be thrilled to talk to you more about that. To test personalized prevention models in health systems, focusing on implementation, implementation science. And again, Marius is a particular expert in this field and would be pleased to talk to you about this. We're going to move forward on those three goals very specifically in 2024. The other two goals will come into the four a little bit later on, to utilize effectively digital transformation and health data, and devise a forward-looking research and policy agenda in LP Little A because we don't want to come out of this exercise in five years' time and realise that we've missed a beat, that actually some of the work and thinking is still very, very peripheral to what's actually going on in the real world and all of the developments, technology, data that will happen. Quickly on goal one, targeted advocacy work to ensure that, ensure that LP Little A gets a visibility in the global health policy environment and in key countries, partnering with global and local medical education providers to develop and disseminate an open learning education program, and also to foster the FH Europe LP Little A ambassador program, to implement a global awareness campaign championed by the LP Little A ambassadors and strongly supported by medical professionals, very much around the LP Little A uh, on an annual event, on an annual basis. Looking more in detail to goal two, and again, you can get more information from Sanfina, undertake a, costing, a global cost effectiveness study on LP Little A using the Copenhagen studies and the UK Biobank, incorporating a patients and citizens component that reflects the outcomes that are really important to them and the social, societal dimension. Adapt the global model in one key country, probably Denmark, which is where most data is available, and develop a roadmap on how this can be adapted for other countries to be tested in China and Canada, and present all of these findings in the right sort of learned societies at international level, HA International and ISPOR specifically, and of course the publications. The governance is really important, and we're going to set up an LP Little A Global Assembly, which will accelerate the dissemination and socialization of the main outputs, the main deliverables, and also this 
Global Assembly will be a key advisory body to ensure strong engagement and commitment from all of the key stakeholders and promoting transparency and accountability. And this slide, this last slide, is really just looking at the governance structure. There will be the steering group, which was the initial core group that will expand a little, that will provide strategic guidance and oversight to the initiative. We will hopefully, funding dependent, set up a small project team for implementation. The LP Little A International Task Force will continue to provide its amazing, very far-ranging, multi-stakeholder expertise. We'll also get advice from the Global Assembly, bringing in other international national organisations, and we'll also get the inputs and insights from industry, the life science industry and beyond through a dedicated industry panel. So that gives you a sense of where we're going with this project, as I say, very much funding dependent, but we've really got ourselves very well organised, I think, to be able to move forward in 2024 um, with a very, very robust plan and a stepwise approach focusing on those first three goals initially. I'll stop here. Um, I'm not sure that we have too much time for questions, but as I say, there are four or five key people who are very much involved in this initiative who would be happy to talk to you in the break. But let me check if there are any big burning questions that anybody wants to pose at this stage.